thought we were the protectors of truth. Democrats, Republicans, you all lie. We, a small band of survivors, are on our way to the Steel City to find the resistance. Join us. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance with Senior Airman Ward Miller and the ironclad voice of Pittsburgh, Hutch Jr., laying down verbal C4 to blow away the lies and the political tomfoolery. Your papers have been cleared. Welcome to the Steel City Resistance. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Steel City Resistance. This is episode 72, the Memorial Day weekend episode of the program. My name is Hutch Jr., and I'm in the neighborhood of Brookline in the city of Pittsburgh, deep down in the bunker. And I'm Ward Miller, also in the city of Pittsburgh here in Mission Control. And I want to take a second here to wish everybody a happy, safe Memorial weekend. And, uh, you know, give a shout out to the, our troops because without the troops and the veterans and everybody, Memorial Day would just be another day. And especially those who gave all. I mean, that's what the day's really about. And uh, without them, we wouldn't be here. We'd be speaking German or something else. So God bless you. Amen. Another deep show word. It, it just gets like that. Uh, I got a, we had a, a tweet from Rob Underwood, who recently uh, friended our group on, or our Facebook page. Uh, he sent that uh, more of our weapons going overseas and uh, attached a link uh, that basically was outlining the Obama administration denies role in arming Syrian rebels. Well, we haven't really covered Syria that much. There's too much going on. We should probably. Uh, but that's just one that I kind of missed, Ward. Yeah, well, uh, there's a lot of bad stuff going on in Syria, and they've already killed 7,000 of their own people, you know, and they want to call them, um, you know, rebels or whatever. And uh, In fact, John McCain was making the rounds today saying that, that we need to do something that the president needs to stand up and and just tell them, hey, you, you got to knock that shit off. He didn't take uh, any prisoners either. He, I saw a couple of those interviews, and uh, I'm not no. a big John McCain fan. I was prior to really scrutinizing him during the election campaign. I was a big fan before that, just because of his actions, you know, in in the Vietnam and whatnot. Uh, but man, he wasn't he wasn't holding back against Obama. He was really just. Uh, no holds barred. I was surprised. I, you rarely see McCain like that unless he's talking to somebody in the military. Yeah, and it's one of them things where, the, you know, somebody's got to stand up for, for these, you know, that's what the United States has always done. We stand up for people that can't stand up for themselves, and that's what's happening over in Syria. I mean, they killed like 90, 90 people, and like 30 of them were children, and I mean, just the whole mass grave with the, with the backhoe, you know, it was horrible. Yeah, that was just this weekend. Yeah, yeah, this is... Uh, there's been, I, I think they said it's the numbers between seven and nine thousand. Yeah, yeah. Overall, and, and he, he brought up a good point that I never really thought of. Uh, Syria and Assad, they're uh, you, almost, you might as well call it a dynasty. It was uh, the other Assad son. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they're the biggest surrogate of Iran, and if the Assad regime was toppled, that would be a major strike to Iran. So, uh, uh, well, to Iran and Hezbollah. Yeah. So that's something that we're going to have to pay a little bit more attention to. Thanks, Rob, for uh, getting us on track. I appreciate that. I was talking a little uh, little bit of Little League with Nancy on Facebook. Nothing too, uh, too deep. But, uh, hey, once again this week, Ward, how about the Obama administration in these primaries? I mean, this is just unbelievable. In Arkansas and Kentucky, he got snaked again by a – By a nobody. Well, yeah, a guy named Wolf – in Arkansas, uh, who's has something to do with politics, but uh, not a real yeah, big I mean, name. Nationwide, he's in, the guys. These guys that are doing this stuff are, are nobody. Right. Nobody has ever heard of them <laughs> on the national stage, and, and they're they're getting decent numbers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, almost fifty percent. I mean, it down yeah. in uh, Kentucky wasn't with a guy, but it was uh, uncommitted. People voted for, and they gotta yeah. be they gotta be going nuts in the White House, man. They just have to be. I don't, I don't know. I don't know that this has ever happened before. This election is going to be something to watch. It really is. Uh, wow. You know, when when uh, McCain was on Fox News Sunday, well, right after that, uh, the Catholic Cardinal of Washington, D.C., who used to be our bishop in Pittsburgh, Whirl, uh, was on. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, the Mike Wallace, Chris Wallace, had to ask the Mormon question. 
it's I couldn't believe he did it, man. It's like, do you think Mormon is a real Christian or a, a, a true Christian? Or and Whirl was just professional as hell about it. He was just like, you know what? I'm not judging. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not going there, man. You know, so it was pretty, uh, pretty embarrassing to watch Chris Wallace. I mean, you know, it, it, they're just like just a little bit better than the mainstream media, but it comes out in them all the time because they're all from the mainstream media. Well, in fact, that uh, story I, I kind of grabbed that I was gonna, I was thinking about putting it in today, because it, the it really follows uh, what we were talking about. The lawsuit, you, know? you mean? Well, no, no. Uh, the mainstream media's coverage of the lawsuits. Right, the non-existent right. coverage of lawsuits, except Fox News. Yeah, Fox News has, has done a, a little bit, but uh, according to the what it was it the the Media Research Center on how network evening newscasts treated coverage of the dozen of federal lawsuits filed Monday, according to the center, CBS spent 19 seconds on the story after yeah. it broke, while the other networks gave absolutely no coverage. And to Fox News' credit, they did put Bishop or Cardinal Whirl on for like a half hour. Yeah. You know, I mean, so at least they did. It is a this, big story. Well, and here's the thing that, that nobody wants to talk about. You know, and, and I, I mentioned this on Twitter a couple of days ago, and I, I think I did something on, it was on Facebook or whatever. But anyway, here's the thing that, that the leftist media doesn't want you to hear. So, of course, I'm going to say it. The bottom line is, this is exactly what it means for separation of church and state. Exactly. That means that the state can't dictate what religious organizations can do. And the fact that the Obama administration expects the, the Catholic religion, people who do not believe in contraception, they do not believe in abortion, they do not believe in, um, you know, birth control pills or anything like that, for them to, to create a law that says that the Catholic Church has to provide abortions and has to provide contraception, it is is a total violation of church and state. That is what that law is in effect for. It has absolutely nothing to do with whether or not you can pray in ch in, oh, in school. It's been so bastardized. I mean, it, you're right. It has not. It, it, it basically outlines that the state cannot create a religion. You know, cannot be a religion. You know, it, it cannot it, dictate to a religion. Right. And, and it, it's been so blown out of skill of uh, kilter. It's just uh, people think that it's the separation of church and state means that there can be no religion in government, which is not true. It's, no, just, it's, not just that the, it's just that the government can't force a religion on you like they did with King Edward. You know, Correct, that, which, where he made everybody Protestant well, and anybody who wanted to be, remain Catholic was, was in Ireland. And, exactly, and that's why that's America that started. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, we're going to have to watch that. It, it's a crying shame. The whole media, I mean, there's another meme going out that... Uh, they're washing all the stories about Malia Obama. I guess she went out to a rock concert or wherever she went. But the media is just fast and furiously erasing all the coverage and everything. There's no Secret Service agents there. There's some dangerous stuff going on right now. Uh, and the media just refuses. They're, they're part and parcel with the DNC. It's it's getting more sickening every day. And I, and I honestly believe it's going to be the end of them. I, really I actually hope it is. I, I hope that, that somebody steps forward with... A billionaire, yeah. Yeah, a billionaire, uh, you know, and I was kind of hoping it was going to be Breitbart. He could and, have, too, and his, know, his organization might be able to pull it through. He was a dynamic person, though. Yeah, I mean, and his organization is more Internet-based. I, I think that there actually needs to be, you know, what Fox News was originally, yeah. where it was, uh, you know, more conservative. I don't even want conservative. I don't. Just truth. All I want is give me truth. the truth. That's it. That's exactly right. You know, and when you get the truth, it'll automatically be conservative anyway because the liberal left-wing socialist is all a joke and it's all fiction. None of it's true. It doesn't work. Anybody, any thinking man knows it doesn't work. Uh, all you have to do is look around, uh, and the conservatism will come, along with truth. I mean, I don't even think you have to worry about it. And the truth shall set you free. Two plus two must always equal four. Uh, Eric sent us a link also. He sent a link about uh, there was this guy that was uh, like he, he's supposed to be like a William Buckley-type conservative icon. I've never heard of the guy. What's uh, his name? I can't remember. I don't have it up in front of me either. But the, the article basically was saying 
how how wrong the Tea Party was and how this guy's supposedly a conservative, right? How wrong the Tea Party was and how we need to, you know, get along with the other side and and just all kinds of drivel like that. The Tea Party's ridiculous and Breitbart is damaging and Alan West is crazy. And I'm thinking, I wrote back to him. I said, you know, this is what we do. We are trying to purge our ranks of idiots like this guy. Guys like this have been making us lose for tens for decades. It's people like that that have the idea that we're not at war with the left. I mean, well, the, the the thing is, when you look at, at you know a lot of these statements, you know, okay, I mean, break them down one at a time. Uh, you know, there has to be concessions. No, the Tea Party is not about concession. The Tea Party is about fiscal responsibility, and you can't cut on that. You can't cheap on that. No, you know, if you want to, if you want to come to our side, that's fine. But we're going down this road now. Yeah, and, and that is, I mean, the Tea Party is as close to, uh, well, the Tea Party is fiscal conservative. So when you say that you are a conservative Republican, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for somebody that's going to say, "I'm fiscally conservative. I want the United States to. I want this administration to quit spending money that we don't have." And every I agency wanna, in it. Every single agency in the entire government, including yeah, when, defense. Yeah, when you consider that, that this administration alone spent more money than all the previous administrations combined, there's an issue. Yeah. And whether the left, and of course you're not going to find this on, on, the, you know, on network news, and CBS will never carry it, but it's the truth and you can look it up. And the Barack Obama administration in less than four years spent more money than every president from Bush back to Washington yeah. combined. It's horrific. It really is. And you look at the reasoning behind it. It's uh, Cloward and Piven. And I mean, that should be being reported too. It's I can't believe there's so many people lined up to protect a guy trying to kill the United States. Well, yeah. I mean, and the thing is, you know, there was another article I read that last week that 50% of the households in the United States are on some form of uh, the government dole. I've read, I read just tonight, I almost entered it into the journal, that 50% of the veterans of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars are claiming at least one disability. And that's a mentality that has to stop. I mean, I know I'm all for helping veterans. So don't get me wrong here. But when these troops come back, they're almost enticed into getting tax-free money. That's the way they advertise it, the VA. You know, yeah. and there's a lot of people lining up that, you know, don't really need to be lining up, but they are anyway because they make it so easy. Uh, it's just got to stop, man. It has to be. It has to be. There has to be more honor instilled in our culture. There really yeah. does. We're slipping a little bit. The weekly jihad report from May 19th to May 25th, 41 jihad attacks, five Allah Akbars, 253 dead bodies, and 529 critically injured. Your weekly jihad report. Judged the religion by, of peace. Yes, absolutely. The religion of peace, changing the world one body at a time. The Obama administration's war on poor blacks. Judged by today's campaign rhetoric, we now live in a war zone. Democrats insist that the GOP has declared war on women and opened a second front with a war on the poor. Thus far, Republicans have yet to accuse Democrats of warmongering, but if they choose this option, let me suggest a possibility. The Obama administration's war on poor blacks, especially the young. This is a remarkably stealthy war and one hardly noticed by the Republicans. But the carnage far outshines what Republicans have allegedly been inflicting on women and the poor. The commander-in-chief's strategy is to confer what superficially appears to be a benefit, but in practice brings calamity, killing with kindness to women. An April 2012 Equal Employment Opportunity Commission edict perfectly illustrates this plan. The EEOC ruled that employers risk violating the 1964 Civil Rights Act by considering the job applicants past arrest or criminal conviction record. Since blacks and Hispanics are more likely than whites or Asians to have run afoul of the law. The underlying principle is disparate impact. If a policy disproportionately hurts blacks or Hispanics, it could point to unfair discrimination. The EEOC recommends that employers not ask about convictions on job applications 
and that if and when they make such inquiries, the inquiries be limited to convictions for which exclusion would be job-related for the position in question and consistent with business necessity. No business can overcome employee criminality without expensive, unproductive measures. I cannot imagine any job, no matter how humble, that does not require honesty. Despite my best efforts to hire only honest employees, I encountered customer credit card theft to buy a car, no less, pilfering inventory, stealing from the till, cutting private discount deals with customers, falsifying timesheets, and even robbing the honor cash cup for soft drinks in the break room. But these are just minor annoyances compared to what occurs elsewhere. Try operating an enterprise where employees deal drugs, fence stolen goods, operate a gambling ring, or engage in white-collar crimes such as selling proprietary information, padding expense accounts, and embezzlement. Short of imposing a police state, eliminating such behavior is exceedingly difficult and expensive. Culprits are typically caught only due to stupidity, greed, or someone ratting on them rather than business policing. Let me confess, the author is a business owner. I checked whether prospective employees paid their utility bills on the ground that if they couldn't manage these, they probably would make a less than perfect employee. I also worried about such employees stealing to keep the lights on. The EEOC is wrong. Managing one's credit can be a valuable indicator of job-related traits. Why risk hiring those unable to pay a small water bill? Again, better to avoid the problem altogether via automation, hiring fewer employees, relocating, and all the rest. And these two EEOC impositions hardly end the Obama war on poor blacks. Recall, recall how the Departments of Education and Justice are pressuring schools to discipline students by racial quota, a policy that will surely bring more racial segregation to undermine public schools. More troubled schools is, of course, just what poor what poor blacks do not need, <clears throat> or pressuring colleges to admit more unqualified blacks and Hispanics who will then waste years while accumulating debt. So much for having a protector in the White House. What is disturbing about this war is that its harm is self-evident to anybody familiar with the business. These helpful policies also teach youngsters that criminality will have no consequences if they can elect a certain kind of president. Perhaps only an ex-community organizer believes that businesses can be forced to hire iffy employees without fighting back. Obama's help demonstrates only that he is doing something for African Americans, all the while burnishing his radical credentials by pressuring racist businesses. Rhetoric aside, the Obama administration is engaging in cheap vote-getting stunts that will only harm those who will vote Democratic. A far superior strategy would be to facilitate firing iffy black employees so that employers might take some risks in hiring them in the first place. But imagine the outcry if Obama endorsed this more sensible alternative. Better to sacrifice a few million unemployed for the sake of appearances. And that's so right. We've talked about it before. I mean, almost almost every one of these policies that the left has put out there are hurting hurting groups of people. Sure. And, the you know, it, the, the bottom line is the DNC is never is is going to be quick to point a finger. Well, it, it's just that the the Republicans want to keep you down and da da da. <laughs> it's all, the, all that the Republicans are saying is, why not have the best candidate for the job win the job? Yeah. Uh, I don't care if they're white, black, green, purple, whatever. If the if the guy if I'm applying for a job against another guy and the guy has a better record than me, he ha he scores better on an entrance test than me. He should get the job. Absolutely. And I'm not and there's no bones with that. Where I'd have the issue is when they say, "Well, we got to hire based on a quota and the guy that beat you out scored 50 points less than you on the test. He doesn't have nowhere near the credentials you have. However, he meets our quota." I'll tell and you what, and quotas I, are just wrong. I think it's blowing up in their face too. All this all this racial rhetoric, I really do. My my son is 22 years old. He might be 23 by now, I'd have to check. <laughs> but he's uh he's in a very very liberal college. And he went on a rant today. He came over and saw me and he was just like, "All this racist stuff, this is so ridiculous." Da, 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 da. And I'm like, "Okay, that's what I'm talking about." You know, it's starting to become obvious to people that aren't really in the news all the time. Yeah. And that's excellent. And it should. 
it's about time because yeah i mean this goes back for years you know and they want to you know keep bringing up race and segregation and whatnot as soon as they quit you know playing the race card and talking about it being a race thing a black versus white thing or a, a you know a, a white versus mexican or, or spanish or whatever as soon as they quit doing that, and instead of you being an Afro American, you're just an American. That's what we. The, the whole group thing is a, is strictly yeah. a Democrat thing. Sure, and that's going to cause segregation. It's, it balkanizes it's, the country. Correct is what it does, and that's what we're going to get. And, and, and the sooner that everybody, not the whites, the blacks, the the Hispanics, whatever, you're not a Hispanic American. If you're an American, you're an American. There's no hyphen in it. Right. And the sooner that people start to realize that and the, and the sooner they start to think of themselves not as an Afro-American or an Italian American or an Irish American it's or just, whatever. It's sickening. It's, it is. I'm an American. Yeah. And, anyway, and, and, uh, we go a long way for getting that squared away if Stedman would have his act together. You know, he, he's not a, a very big help in all this. Yeah, apparently the GOP House leadership has sent a letter to Attorney General Holder demanding he comply with the subpoena ordering him to provide more documents about the failed Obama administration gun tracking program, Fast and Furious. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we have Fast and Furious on the show. The America, and this is a quote, the American people deserve to know uh, how such a fundamentally flawed operation could have continued for so long and have a full accounting of who knew of and approved of an operation that placed weapons in the hands of drug cartels, said the letter sent Friday by uh, Republican or House Speaker Re Representative uh, John Boehner. House Majority Leader uh, Eric Cantor and the House Majority Whip Kevin uh, McCarthy and Representative Daryl Issa, Chairman of the Chamber's Investigative Committee, Issa wants to, wants to put Holder in contempt of Congress for failing to comply with the October 2011 subpoena issued uh, for the documents. House members say Holder has provided only select information, while the administration argues Holder has provided what is required for the congressional investigations. Now, here's the thing that everybody got to, you know, take issue with. Number one, Congress said we want this information, period. Now, with the separation of powers, the, the executive branch has no authority to say no. And apparently, once again, our, uh, what do we want to call him? The, the, the chief uh, constitutional professor doesn't understand the fact that the, there's no reason for them not to provide this information. It, it is law, and yeah. Eric Holder will go to prison, because the House is all you know. The House is run by the Republicans, and the Republicans are saying, "You present this information, or we're going to throw your ass in jail." And there's a lot of Democrats that are jumping on board this. Uh, unfortunately, they have to. Miss Botox isn't though. House Democrat leader Nancy Pelosi dismissed any suggestion Holder might be in contempt. Are they on drugs? They it, created that position for her. You this, this this guy ought to be in prison though, and not just for this either. This is the worst. But that stuff with the Black Panthers, just dismissing it, that, that guy came out and gave all the testimony, and they just disregarded it 100%. There's freaking, there's mobs of black kids running around beating people up because of the rhetoric these people are spitting out. And it's got to be, uh, they got to be held accountable for this in some way. Uh, I've, yeah. I've said that a lot of times. One, one of the things about, uh, about this election is we got to get our law and order back together. Yeah, because it it has it's not there. No. For the last three years, uh, you know, they're raid. They're, these government agents are raiding guitar factories because they're using some kind of wood. And and when you track it down, we're not. The guys aren't even breaking any laws. You know, yeah. the, it's horrible, man. Another creepy thing that's going on. And I wish I could have got the audio for this, but it was too long. I, I started to look for it uh, right before the show, and the clips were like nine and eleven minutes long, and it was real hard to hear. Uh, but basically, I did hear it on television. North Carolina teacher was captured on video suggesting that a student could be arrested for Obama criticism. Now here, 
Hey, uh, if that if that were the case, we'd be in prison. Huh? Oh yeah, and I mean, but this was this was like a I don't know, it was like a ninth grade class or something. Let me just uh, a North Carolina high school teacher, so it's probably at ninth grade, was captured on video shouting at a student who questioned President Obama and suggesting he could be arrested for criticizing a citizen or a sitting president. The Salisbury Post, which first reported on the YouTube video did not identify the teacher in question who is reportedly on staff at North Rowan High School. The video does not show faces, but the heated argument in the classroom can clearly be heard. Do you realize that the people were arrested for saying those things bad about Bush, the teacher said, toward the end of the argument, telling the student, you are not supposed to slander the president. All this kid did was ask about a passage in his book about whether he bullied a girl. And this lady went off. I mean, she totally, you could tell... I'm going to do a little profiling here. You could tell she was a black lady, right, by the inflection of the voice. Or maybe not, but 99%. And the kid was a white kid. And he was he was going, going toe-to-toe with her, though. Yeah, I mean, he put up a good argument. However, if you're a teacher, number one, you should know you can criticize the president. You are allowed to because of the First Amendment. It says that you can you can speak your mind. You can't threaten to kill the president. If you threaten the president's life, that is illegal, and that can end you in jail. You're going to Lewisburg however, with yeah. other, with other people that have done it. However, when for you to question or criticize, you know his position on a, on a bill, his position on anything is totally legal. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, and I would dare this teacher to come up and explain to me what people were arrested for saying bad things about Bush. <laughs> they, they don't have enough jails. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the entire the entire state of California oh. has not had nothing nice to say about President Bush, and I didn't see any of them ended up in jail. So I, th- I think your, your uh, argument's a little flawed there. Now, I, heard, I heard that she was suspended. Uh, I don't know what date this post went up on our archives here, but according to the Salisbury Post, the teacher is still employed and has not been suspended. I think she since has been. The Rowan Salisbury school system expects all students and employees to be respectful in the school environment and for all teachers to maintain their professionalism in the classroom. This lady didn't even seem illiterate. Uh, Uh, This incident should serve as an education for all teachers to stop and reflect on their interaction with students, the school said in a statement published by The Post. Due to personnel and student confidentiality, we cannot discuss the matter publicly the video was first posted online last week. I kind of wonder if there's a teacher's union involved. Oh, I imagine so. I mean, they, they, I'll tell you what, this is going to be telling in a couple of weeks. Uh, when's the Wisconsin recall election? That's beginning of June, right? Yeah. That, that's, uh, I think, next week or the week after, yeah. I, I think Walker's going to crush him. Yeah, it's going to get ugly. And, I mean, they, uh, they spent so much national union dues money in there that uh, yeah, this could be— trying a, to get this— yeah, this could be a bellwether of things to come. It really could. It could embolden. Uh, I keep waiting for the governor of Pennsylvania. He's like, is he in a closet somewhere? Is he alive? Have you heard anything from this guy? No. I mean, it's like a non-governor. <laughs> where is he? All these other guys are out doing all these wonderful things, and where's my guy? We can't even privatize a liquor store in this state. Well, the the reason we can't privatize liquor store goes back to the unions. I know, and the beer I mean, distributors. That, I understand. That's, what, that's the bottom line. It's 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 all union related. But the the thing in Wisconsin that that I thought was really awesome was the Tea Party mobilized, and the Tea Party showed up there and start going door to door and explaining exactly what good things that Walker has done since he's gone. You know, since he was elected, and. You know, and they don't, they're not allowing them to use the smears and the, you know, that they're able to present numbers. This is how many people that have been and again, the truth, able to get a the, job the, since the, this guy. The truth took brings over. it out. And, and, and I mean, actual teachers' jobs, you know, unionized teachers' jobs were saved. And they were, you know, told, hey, the reason that they're saved is because of what he did. Otherwise, yeah, we were he gonna, was able to. Yeah. We were going to let and, your and ass go. And they were the ones that were out there protesting yeah. because the, the unions told them to. But they, he basically saved their jobs. The reason that they still have a job is because of Scott Walker. The best part in the whole thing was that they don't have to get – they cannot uh, take the, the union dues out of the salary. The actual union member has to write a check, and it's voluntary. That had to kill them right there. That's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's just like taxes. If, if you had to – if you had to write a check instead of had withholding coming out of your check, 
This would be a, a 75, 85% conservative country. Guaranteed. Yeah. Guaranteed right now. Woodrow Wilson was a genius by doing that withholding. And I think they should repeal that. Yeah. You know? Because, I mean, really, if you look at the Constitution, taxation's not mandatory. No. It's actually anti-Constitution. I mean, I'd pay my taxes, but I'd just like to see people more aware of how they're getting raped. Well, I mean, here in, in the state of Pennsylvania, especially Allegheny County, uh, the, they implemented a tax that was supposed to pay for buses. And this tax has generated to date almost $4 million. And yet the bus, uh, the, the bus system is, is cutting routes. They're firing, they're laying off people. Uh, they're increasing the cost. So, and they haven't repealed the tax. So that's another union thing. Where, where's that money at? To the, it it's going? going to the $80,000 mechanic. Well, apparently and he's the ninety-one thousand dollars because they're letting them go too. But they're they're keeping the they got all that tenure thing, not tenure, but seniority thing going on. Yeah, that's a, I'm going to do a whole story about that next week or the week after that. There was a really good study put on by the Allegheny Forum for Public Policy, I think's the name of it, uh, that outlined how what we should do with that whole transportation system is privatize anything that has anything to do with the operation of the transportation program. Like the management can still be government or whatever, but anybody who touches a bus or a dispatch or a schedule has to be a privatized person that knows how to do it. And they'd cut costs. They've done it in about 18 different cities across the world. Uh, it was a pretty good, uh, pretty good study. Uh, they had a study down in Florida, though, that uh, Chicago land all over again. Yeah, it has been learned that Florida election officials are set to announce that the Secretary of State has discovered and purged up to 53,000 dead voters from the voter rolls in Florida. How could 53,000 dead voters have sat on the polls for so long? Simple, because Florida hadn't been using the best available data re uh, revealing which voters had died. Florida is now using a nationwide Social Security death index for determining which voters should be purged because they have died. I mean, and you know, you listen to these people whenever they're asked about it, and I don't see how with a straight face they can look in a camera and find any reason to argue against that. But they do, and they win. They argue against these things all the time. Well, it's the same thing. Like as the voter ID. Yeah, I don't understand that. Because I know that in order for me, when, when I went to the military, in order for me to, to sign up, I had to provide three different forms of identification. Yeah, we cover, I mean, they take your fingerprints and look up your ass, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> But what I don't understand is, you know, okay, you want to drive a car. Nobody has a problem saying, I want to drive a car. I got to go get a license. What's the difference between that and saying, hey, I want to vote? It's I'm unbelievable. An ID card. It really, and again, once again, let's just go with the truth. Who are you? Well, here's the question that they keep bringing up. That's discrimination. I know. How is that discrimination? And we talked about this last week. You know, if I'm the guy that they're saying is getting discriminated against because I'm too stupid to fill out an ID, I'm going to be offended with that. Yeah, I, you know? I, I want to know what you're discriminating against, unless you're saying, well, we plan on discriminating against illegal aliens voting. And, yeah, that's kind of the point. Right, that's and, and the, the duplicate votes, that. and uh, uh, well, that's just something else. But we'll, we'll live through it all again. I mean, Acorn will come out yeah. with, that, with another name. You know what? I have, I have the perfect solution for this, all right? Everybody out there, write this down because you heard it here first. Here's what you do. You, you, every year, you send registered voters a card, like an ATM card that just you know has the black barcode thing in the back. Good for one vote. And it's good for one vote. You take that to an ATM. You use the ATM to do the voting. You put the card in. You punch in who you're voting for. You walk away. That card doesn't come back. That card gets sent back to you by the time it's ready yeah. for the next election. They could do any number of things. And that way you are guaranteed that the person who has that card is who they say they are. Yeah. I mean, we need to clean it up. It's uh, it's widespread. I mean, there's a uh, talk that, uh, I mean, I've read a lot about organized crime. And, and when John F. Kennedy was elected over Nixon, he beat him by like 100,000 votes, something like that. And it was all about uh, West Virginia and Texas. And it was just, uh, 
Chicago. You know, it was a, an effort that uh, I think somebody came to Nixon and he said, you know what, never mind. <laughs> you yeah. know, I'm not getting involved. I'll get it next time, you know, or whatever. Uh, Joe Biden never uh, never ceases to entertain me. Uh, he definitely, uh, he stepped on it again. He's, he's been doing that. I think, incidentally, that they're going to throw him out. I'd see that coming very soon. I've already heard uh, that he's uh, his staff has been shut out of a lot of high-level meetings lately. Uh, which that doesn't bide good for him. But every time he opens his mouth, I mean, Vice President Joe Biden admitted to a group of supporters in New Hampshire this afternoon that the president would have been able to help the economy much more if the Tea Party hadn't taken the House. Biden showed the audience the Obama campaign's chart of job growth during the president's first term in office and accused the Tea Party for stalling the recovery because of the debt limit fight. Imagine where we'd be if the Tea Party hadn't taken control of the House of Representatives, Biden said, adding that they were a group set on obstructionism. They have one overwhelming goal, prevent President Obama from a second term with no apparently no care of the consequences to the economy, he said. Biden insisted that the president persevered in spite of their obstruction and demonstrated important progress that could be measured. You know, I heard this guy the other day actually say, Obama say that federal spending has decreased under his administration's watch. I mean, he literally said that. It didn't yeah, grow as fast. he said that, and every one of the major news organizations carried it. That doesn't make it true. It's unbelievable, the lies. I mean, they're just just—they're not even falsehoods anymore. They're just lies. Yeah, and the thing is, they, they don't mind doing it. It's no. Not, it, 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 you know, for me to lie like that, uh, to, to even our audience, which is, a, you know, isn't anywhere it's near only, it's only a couple as, million yeah it's not 200 yeah million. we're not as big as nbc or cbs i couldn't lie to my audience and and that's what he does on a regular basis i don't see you how know? jay carney goes home i don't know if he has any kids but he looks like he's the age that he should have kids I, I don't know how he goes home and talks to his children after getting out there and lying every single day it just uh, it's beyond me i remember alan west said something when he had just done like his first 30 days in congress and somebody asked him something, you know, what do you, what's the biggest uh, thing that you didn't expect when you came to Congress? And he said that these people have no problem lying so much, you know, and it's basically true every day, every single day. If you're following the Obama mantra, you're, you're lying, <laughs> you know, it's something else. And then beside, not only that, but they talk about all these money schemes and everything. And then they turn around and, uh, you know, they pay off all their, all their big time supporters all the time. Yeah, and, and our next story uh, highlights that the government or imagine awards, that <laughs> imagine that the government awards a twenty million dollar contract to a DC insider. The Health and Human Services Department has signed a twenty million dollar contract with a public relations firm to help highlight the Affordable Care Act. The new multimedia ad campaign is designed to educate the public about how to stay healthy and prevent illness, an HHS official said. The campaign was mandated by the Affordable Care Act which, and must describe the importance of preventing while also explaining the preventative benefits of providing, provided by the health care law. The law makes uh, many preventative services available without a copay or a deductible and provides new preventative benefits to Medicare patients. The PR firm Porter Novell won the contract after a competitive bidding process. Now, who pays the $20 million price tag to educate Americans? None other than the Americans themselves. You know, and, and it's just, uh, there's so many irons in the fire. Uh, like this, like the Salinger thing. It, it seems to have gone away almost. Well, here's my question on that. Here's 20 million bucks, right, that is is part of the uh, affordable health care bill or whatever the hell they're calling it, the, uh, the Affordable Care Act. Now, here's the thing. What happens in June or July whenever the Supreme Court throws the thing out? Well, there's going to be so much money like that. I mean, there's so many different provisions that are already, like, uh, digging their roots in, you know. It's uh, unbelievable. And, and the, way they, uh, the way they portray this thing is just fictional. You know, and, well, listening to what, uh, you know, the, the justices said, you know, just in comments during the hearings, uh, 
basically from what the way I took it, now I, I could have misunderstood what they were saying, but from the way I took it is they're going to throw out the entire law. They're not going to cut out that I one piece. I hope that's piece. what they do. And, and that's what they alluded to. So I'm not going to say that that's, that's what it is, you know, and I, I don't want to mislead our listeners and let them think that, uh, you know. Yeah, how do we I just, know? I mean. You know, I, I don't, I, I'd hope that they would, you know, basically from what Justice Roberts said is it's not their job to dissect which part of the law to get rid of. If they find the, the clause is unconstitutional to throw the whole thing out. I'll tell you, and when seeing the, next... as the whole law is based on the individual mandate, yeah. the individual mandate gets thrown out, the whole bill's done. And I mean, when, when this next Congress takes office, they better do some damn legislating to keep this stuff from happening again. I mean, we have to protect future generations uh, because they're so crooked. I mean, we determined that the American people are going to have to pay the $20 million, but who gets the $20 million? Americans are forking over for some commercials, none other than the PR firm Porter Novelli, employer of Catherine Kiki McLean. The release states that Novelli won the contract after a competitive bidding process, but McLean's ties to Obama... Uh, raise questions over the legitimacy of this award. McLean, the managing director of Porter Novelli's Washington, D.C. office, is described as a true D.C. insider. On her company bio, she brings more than 20 years' experience to Porter Novelli, having acted as a senior advisor to the Hillary Clinton for President campaign and appeared as an on-air surrogate for the Obama for America campaign. In 2004, she helped develop the acclaimed vice presidential announcement strategy for the John Kerry campaign. She no, served, she's an ace. Yeah, she saved as, served as national press secretary and spokesperson for Vice President Al Gore's presidential campaign and was spokesperson for Joe Lieberman as a Democratic vice presidential nominee in the 2000 general election. So basically, loser, 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 she's loser, like loser. a five-time loser. <laughs> Hey. And now she's handling your twenty million dollars. Yeah, so. yeah, and about about two million is going to get to the get to the job. The rest is going to go in her house. Uh, man, Bill Maher's at it again, Ward. This guy never quits. Yeah, comedian, and I use that term very lightly. Bill Maher, the guy's a sickening. Major, what's that? The guy's sickening. Yeah, uh, a major donor in, uh, to a super PAC supporting President Obama referred to Mitt Romney's for, uh, Mormon faith as a cult. Hutch called this, that they would start attacking the Mormonisms. Uh, Mayor, or May, Mayor, Mar. Mar, yeah. I'm trying to remember how you pronounce it because I don't talk about it. I've much. never watched a show in my life. I, I can't stand it. Anyway, Mar said on Twitter that the presumptive GOP presidential nominee should be discounted when it comes to foreign affairs. Why even listen to Mitt Romney on foreign policy? And this is a quote. His entire foreign policy experience is two years trying to browbeat Frenchmen into joining his cult. Romney spent two years in France on a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Marr, who hosts his own talk show on HBO, donated $1 million to Priorities USA Action, a super PAC that supports Obama. Some Republicans have called on Obama and the Democratic allies to denounce Mayor, or Mar, excuse me, who has made some offensive comments about Sarah Palin and other women. David Axelrod, Obama's top strategist, says that campaign attacks against Romney's religion are off limits, and that's not a fair and that's not fair game," said Axelrod on Sunday on CNN. However, they didn't denounce anything. And do you really want people to start? pulling religion into this campaign debate yep. because Jeremiah, well, <laughs> they can't. They, they, they can go, okay, yeah. He's Mitt, a Mormon. Mitt, Mitt Romney he, won't. No, Romney won't. But th there's other groups that work in the background that, that say that the Romney campaign doesn't have anything to do with this. But they could start airing, you know, sermons of Jeremiah Wright. And I think we who should. Obama has, has claimed is, is a mentor to him. They start doing that kind of stuff. You know, you, you want to, you know, it's, it's one of the things where you are, are you sure you want to pull at yeah. this thread? Right. Because, you know, anything that you do, you know, trying to assassinate the character of Mitt Romney or, or anybody. It's I'm going not, to be pretty I'm hard to do. I'm a big Romney guy anyway, but I, I'm a big, you know what, 
there's certain things that should be off limits. And, and if you want to attack him on his religious beliefs, that's fine. Especially just, an atheist that, like him. It, yeah, As, well, just uh, know that that makes it open game for everybody to attack the, the president. Well, I think it's uh, perfectly uh, acceptable when you have a character like Jeremiah Wright, a true hater and racist. I think it's absolutely acceptable, and, and we should use that, regardless of what they say about Romney. Well, my point is Axelrod saying that that's off limits, and that's why he's saying they're, it because he doesn't. He doesn't want it. Right. Like, nobody's coming out, and they're nobody's. They need to come out and publicly slap around Bill Maher and say, "You got to knock his shit off." Yeah. You know, just because you might think it's funny, or, or the the sheep that follow you around think you're funny, you're not that funny. Number one. Number I know. Two, you're. you're you know, you're stepping into situations that you don't know anything about. He's misogynistic so as hell. Is, he's misogynistic. You know, you want to talk about the war on women? Yeah, you listen know, to this let's guy. Let's talk about the names that, that, that this jackass is called Sarah Palin. Or the people or, that come on his show. That Dan Savage guy, he's a moron. Yeah. You know, they come and, on, and, he brings all these people on his show, and they're just vile. The only way they can have any type of comedy is to be vile. They can't just say something funny that's not, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like they have to bring it out of the gutter. It's never uh, it's never like decent Bill Cosby type of comedy, you know, where it's all clean and it's still funny as hell. Well, you know, and even if you, you want to, you know, the, the thing is it's not funny when you attack somebody. Right. This attack humor is ridiculous. It's stupid, and, and it makes you look stupid for doing yeah, it. It does, and it's always from the left. I mean... You think you think after so long people would figure out the pattern, you know the racist stuff is always from the left, man. It never, you know, you don't see racism at the RNC or whatever. I mean, you can look for it and try to make stuff up, and that's what they do. Uh, but the whole thing is like you and I, we're not sitting here talking racist things on the show. No, you know, but I, go I, listen to a Democrat show. I, I have. My thing is this. It's really simple. I don't believe in racism. No, neither do I. I. And, and I follow behavior. Spent, anybody who's spent time in the military is never going to be racist because whether the guy beside you is white, Hispanic, black, whatever, that's your brother. Yeah. He's going to cover your back and you're going to cover his. That's the way it is. I taught and my once children you get that mentality in your head. You know, the guy next to me is green, man. And the only I don't thing. Care. He, the That's only thing is, is nobody gets a pass because of what their color is. That's right. We're covering behavior, and if you act a certain way, I don't care what. Just because you're black, I'm not going to say you're cool because you're doing that. You know, yeah, I refuse you, you to don't do get that. A pass because of that. No, I I think everybody. I don't care what you do in your bedroom or in your you know your race, anything, creed, whatever you do. The only rule I has if you have is you don't get extra shit because of it. You know, if you're gay, fine, be gay, but you don't get extra shit for it. You don't get ahead of the line or, or none of that. You know, <laughs> that's just my little Preaching philosophy. from the Church of Hutch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, down in Kansas, we got a governor with a, a set of balls. Kansas Governor Sam Brownback has signed into law and aimed at keeping the state's courts or government agencies from basing decisions on Islamic or other foreign legal codes. Da, 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 da. I wish our governor had as many balls as he does. Uh, uh, da, 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 you know what? Let's and do that. What we'll, we'll do is we're on the website, you, you just inspired me, Hutch. Okay. On the website, we're going to get the, the address for all the governors in the United States. This, need, this needs to happen website, right here. And we, we want everybody out there, you could send the governor of Kansas a thank you and, yeah. and tell him you think what he did was great. And you'll be able to send, you know, we'll get you the email addresses or whatever for every governor in, in the country. And you can send them this a link to this article that says, hey, how come you haven't done this? Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, for those listening locally, your city council unanimously voted on a measure that denounced a measure in the Pennsylvania House to do just this. So Pittsburgh City Council is okay with Sharia law, just so you know that. And I called one of them out, and he believes in it. It's, it's unbelievable. Uh, the new law, taking effect July 1st, doesn't specifically mention Sharia law, which broadly refers to codes within the Islamic legal system. Instead, it says courts, administrative agencies, or state tribunals can't base rulings on any foreign law or legal system that would not grant the parties the same rights guaranteed by the state 
and U.S. constitutions. This bill should provide protection for Kansas citizens from the application of foreign laws, said Stephen Geel, spokesman for the American Public Policy Alliance, a Michigan group promoting model legislation similar to the new Kansas law. The bill does not read in any way to be discriminatory against any religion. And we've talked about that several times about uh, Islam not necessarily being a religion, but being more of a political system with a religion embedded in it. Uh, that's going to be tough to do, uh, a Michigan group. That's where Dearborn is, Dearbornistan. And that's a very, very densely populated area, populated with Muslims. So that's going to be tough. But supporters have worried specifically about Sharia law being applied in Kansas court cases. And the Alliance says on its website that it wants to protect Americans' freedoms from infiltration by foreign laws and legal doctrines, especially Islamic Sharia law. Brownback's office notified the state Senate of his decision Friday, but he actually signed the measure Monday. The governor's spokeswoman, Sherry Ann Jones Sontag, said in a statement that the bill makes it clear that Kansas courts will rely exclusively on the laws of our state and our nation when deciding cases and will not consider the laws of foreign jurisdictions. Muslim groups had urged Brownback to veto the measure, arguing that it promotes discrimination. Ibrahim Hooper, uh, a spokesman for the Washington-based Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE, uh, said a court challenge is likely because supporters of the measure frequently express concern about Sharia law. Now, why would CARE ask him to veto the law if the Islamic members of CARE weren't trying to push Sharia law on a United States citizen? You know, they're out there, they're trying to use our own constitution against us, and these guys are so damn blind to it. Either that, or they're getting paid off by them. Either one's possible. Uh, supporters argue the measure <clears throat> simply ensures that legal decisions will protect long-cherished liberties such as freedom of speech and religion and the right to equal treatment under the law. Gill said the measures would come into play if someone wanted to enforce a libel judgment against an American from a foreign nation without the same free speech protections. It's perfectly constitutional, he said. The House approved the bill unanimously nice and the Senate with broad bipartisan support. Even some legislators who were skeptical of it believed it was broad and bland enough that it didn't represent a specific political attack on Muslims. This disturbing recent trend of activist judges relying upon the laws of other nations has been rejected by overwhelming bipartisan majorities in both the Kansas House and Senate, but not the Pittsburgh City Council. City Council got that right to them. Uh, the measure's chief sponsor, Representative Peggy Mast, an Emporia Republican, also has said all Kansans, including Muslims, should be comfortable with the new law, but she did not immediately respond Friday to telephone and email messages seeking comment. Uh, Representative Scott Schwab, an Olathe Republican, acknowledged that the measure merely made some people happy and that a vote against it could be cast politically as a vote in favor of of Sharia law. Am I really concerned that Sharia law is going to take over to Kansas courts? No, he said. I'm more concerned about getting jobs to Kansas. The Michigan-based alliance advocates model American law for American courts legislation. The legislation. Its website says, America has unique values of liberty which do not exist in foreign legal systems, particularly Sharia law. During the Kansas Senate's debate on the bill earlier this month, Sen Senator Susan Wagle a Wichita Republican described the vote for the measure as a vote for women's rights, adding they stone women to death in countries that have Sharia law. Who, yeah, but they bury him only up to the neck. You know, the man they only bury to the waist, so he gets a fighting chance. But uh, anyway, uh, Hooper said supporters of such proposals have made it clear they are targeting Islamic law. Underlying all of this is demonizing Islam and marginalizing American Muslims, he said. Well, I'm, I'm down with that. Uh, well, here's the thing. You come to this country, you come to this country, and we are a con we are a nation of laws. And you uh, you have opted to come to this country of laws. If you do not enjoy the laws that are in this country, go away. It's really simple. And that's the it, thing that we have to get more. We have to get back into that. It used to be 
a cornerstone of our immigration uh, and uh, what's the other word? You know, integration into society, assimilation. Naturalization. You know, it used to be a cornerstone of that, that we upheld American traditions and values and language and culture. And it was like, you either join this or you ain't coming. <laughs> you know, I mean, you have to actually. It's what it should be. It should be. I mean, if you want to live here, there's a reason you want to live here. You're not turning this into, into Pittsburghistan. We're not having that. It's it's not it's not even uh, close to compatible with our way of life. If you you don't see a whole lot of people from here going over to Afghanistan trying to live. Nope. You know there's, there's a reason for that. Yeah, these people are stuck in the fourth century, and and uh, they're getting worse with every iteration of inbred births. I mean, they're just getting uh, they're 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 pretty nasty. I mean, when if you look at the facts, the truth. You know, I agree with you, Hutch. You know, I'm not being, I'll never be politically correct about this. I mean, it's uh, nope. its something that my eyes were open to recently, and I think it's a, a, a damn crime when people like Bloomberg and these other idiots that are just like looking around, like our city council is acting like it's okay to cut a woman's clit off. You know, really? You know, I hate to get graphic, but it, it, that's what it is. That's what they do. You and know, once again, there's a reason for our explicit tag. Oh, hey. <laughs> no, I agree okay, with you. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let, let me regroup. Let me regroup. What's it called? It's called, uh, it's called, uh, uh, female, um, circumcision. That's, that's the technical term for it. But it's far from that. And it's, it's grisly. And it's done with a razor blade when a girl's like four years old and there's no anesthetic or nothing like that. And, I mean, we've got pictures if you want to see them. It's disgusting. And that woman has to go through the rest of her life. Every time she has make, has sex with her husband, it's painful for her. You know, what kind of barbarian does that to their women? I had to get that in there. Why, I, you should have stopped me, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I figured that one of us has to give have a reason so we have our explicit tag, and it might as well be you this week. Usually yeah. it's me. Well. You know, it's a, it's a fact, and it's uh, it's just a, any, and that's why I get so upset when I'm talking on Twitter. Most of the people don't follow me anymore, but I used to get into some discussions, and you would not believe the ignorant American females that will stand up for this shit because they don't know. I know. And, I think, and it's a combination of not knowing and trying to be politically correct. If we continue down this road of political correctness, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, if we continue down this road of political correctness, we will shoot ourselves in the foot, period. Absolutely. Because they figured it, out they are using our Constitution against us. It's it, not even the Constitution, Hutch. It's it's the political correctness. Oh, we can't say nothing bad about them because right. then we're we're trying to we're we're trying to marginalize the fact that they have their own religion and they have the, no. We're not trying to marginalize the goddamn thing. We're trying to say that if you're in this country, in order to be in this country, we have laws. You follow our laws. You want to you chop follow, people's hands you, off. You want, you want to drag your laws back here? Fuck you. Go back to right. where you came from. Let them chop your fucking hands That's off right. and whatnot. It's not going to happen here. And we're going to identify what you are. Truthfully, we're not going to sit here and act like you're the religion of peace. We have our jihad report at the top of the show every week. And those are real bodies that are dead, that are cold. They've assumed room temperature. You know, so we're going to call a spade a spade. Political correctness is to make people like Ward and I shut up. That's what it is. And that's never going to happen because... Nope. That's one thing I'm not good at is, number one, shutting up. Number two is being politically correct. Yeah, and, I mean, it has to stop. I try to stop every every conversation I'm in. You know what I mean? It's like, no, no, we're not going down that road. I'm not going to say, you know, that uh, there's a conver political conversation going on. No, there's not. There's a freaking war going on. Yep. There's people that are trying to drag this country down into a socialist cesspool, and there's some of us that know what that is and have been to those countries, and it's not going to happen at least not easily. You not know. as long as I'm breathing. You know, so anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that about wraps it up. We got through it again. We've got this timing down pretty good. I only lost it one time. I, I'd apologize for it, but I'm not really sorry. So uh, anyway, where can the... I never apologize. It's a sign of weakness. Where, where can the folks find us on the interwebs? On the interwebs, you can find us at facebook.com slash Resistance. You can hit us up on our website at steelcityresistance.blogspot.com. I did manage to find the list of every representative in the United States 
that will be posted on the fa on our website, and nice. I will post it on Facebook so that you can find your representatives. It goes from the governor on down through the entire state re state registrations, whatnot. Hit them all. Start. Let, let's make a big campaign of this and say, hey, we want you to, to, to support banning Sharia law yeah. in the United States of America. Definitely. Uh, also, you can now listen to the show right from the Facebook page. That's a nice little innovation. Uh, the TV the show. Figured I'd... It took me a while. It took me a while. I got it, though. I didn't even know it was there. So <laughs> It's pretty cool, though. You awesome. Put, you, put a, you push the button and you're on the show. Uh, so Facebook's getting some traffic. And, and another thing, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, appreciate you telling your friends and neighbors and whatnot about the show. The listenership is steadily increasing, and we always like that. Uh, so I would ask you, to the new listeners, there's a, quite a few new listeners in there. If you enjoy the show, please tell your friends about it. I mean, if you don't enjoy it, then you probably won't listen to if, it anymore. If you don't enjoy it, tell your friends about us anyway. Yeah, tell them it's cool anyway. <laughs> Play a dirty trick on them, you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for allowing us into your life for one hour. And Ward, if you don't have anything else... No, sir, I'm over and out. We'll see you guys next week.